Well, switching gears and a renowned New York City doctor and her baby are dead in what police are calling a murder-suicide. Police say on Saturday, Dr. Crystal Cachetta shot and killed her four-month-old baby before turning the gun on herself. The 40-year-old doctor specialized in breast cancer research. Police still right now investigating what led up to this tragic shooting. But some experts speculate her death could possibly be linked to postpartum depression. Remember, her baby was four months old. That's a maternal mental health disorder, which affects one out of every seven women after childbirth. And so just days ago, the FDA did approve a first of its kind pill to treat postpartum depression. That pill is taken only for two weeks, but some women do report symptoms getting better in as little as three days after taking that medication. So joining us now is women's health expert, Dr. Jessica Shepard. Dr. Shepard, thank you so much for your time. Uh, first of all, you know, why is there a need for a pill like this versus other treatments that may currently be available? Now, you know, hearing the story is very shocking and disturbing, but again, this is something that we do see that needs to be addressed, which is postpartum depression. Now, typically when you see something uh, you know, play out as severe as what happened in this case, we do start to think is this postpartum psychosis. And that really is a different form of postpartum depression, obviously much more severe. But postpartum depression in general is something that has not been talked about a lot. And as you can see here, those are the symptoms and signs. But we have to do a better job at recognizing it, but also taking the stigma away from women who are experiencing this to talk to their providers. This medication, which was, you know, FDA approved, is actually very important when we look at postpartum depression and or postpartum psychosis because it has a short time that it has an onset. And just like you said, three days before some women in the study started to feel effect is very important because that can be a very a quick onset that you start to have these types of feelings that can lead to what we see here possibly in this case. So typically what we have used in the past is more of a SSRI, which can take up to what, six to eight weeks to work. And sometimes the time is of essence and that's what we need in those certain cases. So I think that there are two things that need to be addressed with this particular case is one, we need to pay more attention and listen more and look for the signs that lead to postpartum depression and or, and or psychosis. But mm -hmm. This drug really is going to make a difference when we look at have access to oral medication that has a beneficial option for many women who are coping with extreme and sometimes very life-threatening feelings. Well, Dr. Shepard, I mean, at the top of this, I said one out of seven women experience at some form of postpartum after giving birth. Yeah. So one in seven, obviously, you know, that, that's a really high number there. But are we potentially as a society just over prescribing, always throwing pills at something? Because it seems like whatever your ailment and not to, to lessen this, but whatever your ailment, yeah. it seems like there's, there's some type of medication to take at this point. Yeah, I think that you have you pose a very good question because we actually do see this an estimated 400,000 people per year who have postpartum depression. But what we haven't really accounted for is, again, preceding some of these feelings is having more of a mental health care capacity of our prenatal care, but also for society. I think that we have uh, found ways sometimes to blunt some of the effects emotionally, not really dealing that with some um, complementary alternative ways of dealing with mental health and depression and being able Able to take the stigma away. But I think when it comes to a medication standpoint, we do need something that is going to impact for this specific uh, instance that we see in postpartum depression. So I think it really is a combination of two different things of what are we doing societal wise to actually deal with this mental health issue. And that expands to obviously much more than this topic. But in that, what are we doing to address some of the needs that are very severe and need a very acute and quick onset for uh, it to be dealt with and for that person to be mentally stable in order to at least start with the next process and getting them the care that they need. Absolutely. And then the flip side of my question there, I mean, we see this horrible tragedy with Dr. Cushetta. You know, she certainly mm -hmm. had every ability uh, to, to access help, to access treatment, and yet still, you know, potentially suffered right. from this debilitating, uh, mm -hmm. you know, disease or, or at least this deb debilitating depression. Because we see that with someone who could access everything, does every mother, every new mother need this prescription? 
I think, you know, when they look at the actual the FDA approval, this was specifically, again, for severe cases. Now, when we look at postpartum depression, you said one in seven, that really can take different forms of very mild, whether that's postpartum blues of just feeling down versus it's taking on a whole new light and how you respond and interact with your child or for relationships outside of just you and your newborn, and then also to the severe case that we're seeing now. So even though we have our SSRIs and some other medications that have been helpful, uh, having different groups uh, to access for mothers. I think that's more important as well as the interaction, the ability to voice some of their issues that they're going through. So it doesn't always necessarily need to be a medication, but that we're listening and paying attention to the signs and symptoms. Yes, yeah, certainly key there. Dr. Jessica Shepard, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.